All right, let's get started. So if you open the website, I find the, the web page of the lab. It's over here. Can I just click? As you can find out lab one. So the due date is, I'm gonna label on the website as well, but right now I just write it down on the paper. Monday at 10 p.m. Every Monday, if there's a lab due, it's going to be Monday at 10 p.m. So what I'm going to do is I will just directly go to the web page and find out student labs and open each of your lab reports and print it as a PDF and grade it and send it back to you by email. That's the way I can give you, give you guys the feedback. Um, so that means if you upload your web page after 10 p.m., and when I was opening your web page, it's still blank. You know, still like uh, whatever, like this original, like a template. Then you're not getting any credit on that. So make sure it's working. You want to double check the web page. It is working before you uh, start working on something else. And I highly recommend you, if it's the first time you guys upload the web pages to the server, um, please do it earlier. So if you have some questions, you can still ask. So sometimes after you upload the HTML and everything onto the server, but it's still not being refreshed. The way you want to do that is just directly refresh the browser and you can get, you can see it's being updated. Okay, just refresh. Or just delete all the cookies and in the buff, store in the buffer. So the way to do that is a control shift, delete. Right? It's called delete everything. So you can clear out the buffer and then refresh the browser. It should update the web page for you. <clears throat> so now let's get into the lab. I have uploaded uh, two videos. One is for 70s equivalent circuit, one is for superposition. So these are two fundamental circuit series being covered in Engineering 201. However, since we are going to cover digital analog converter, and it's being used over there as well, so we have to understand what's going on, um, or review it, at least. So this lab, the first lab is to review superposition 7 is equivalent, and LT spice as well. So these, uh, that's the purpose of this this lab um, and I hope you guys can pay enough attention to superposition and 70s equivalent because it's been covered in the uh, DAC you have to understand this first to understand the DAC digital to analog converter and that DAC is being covered in like a few homework assignments a midterm exam final exam and also the final project so I have to pay enough attention to this to understand it if you don't uh, don't hesitate to ask questions. Any questions, I'm going to answer that in detail. Okay, Make sure you guys can understand every single thing for this two series. So first, so this is being recorded, right? So don't panic if you are cannot remember everything, which is fine. Since I have these two recorded videos, and also I have this lab is being recorded as well. No worries. It's due next Monday at 10 p.m. So LT spice, you can definitely use symbols to build this circuit as a schematic. So on your computer on the desktop, it's in this PC or my computer, whatever, just that main thing. And on the C drive, there's a program files, not the x86 one, the other one. And there's a folder called LTC. Can I find it? Not, not on my laptop, on your desktop. It's this PC. Go to this PC. Probably here as well. Let me see. Go to this C drive. And find out uh, program files and LTC. 
uh, you can so what you can do is you can actually create a shortcut can you so if you copy and paste to the desktop what's going to happen let's see boom so it's not a shortcut anyway but i mean you can every time you can just or you can install out spot by yourself it's free okay just do it on a laptop and double click this one it's going to open out these files um so what i usually do is i just directly press the window key on the keyboard and i'll just type lt and it's going to show up i don't know if this happens the same on your end try it it's going to be way easier so open out these files have you opened out these files you have Uh, and um, start a new schematic here new schematic and remember that I can press F2 can bring up the library and you can build everything just using the symbols however we are not going to use the symbols we're going to practice spice spice code so spice stands for simulation program integrated circuits emphasis so it's for ic design but you know we're not going to do this so create another schematic and the first way you can type the code into spice is using dot op just click and you can type the circuit into here so the way to type a circuit into spice is to assign voltage nodes like this one there are only a few voltage nodes and because this is ground so it has to be zero it's called node zero and this is node one node two node three and there are only four nodes because this becomes zero again so that's the network of this circuit and now let's program it ah I want to make it smaller. Hmm. So starting from the first voltage, let's go V1. So type V1 here. It has to start with V, but it doesn't have to be V1. You can call it whatever V, but it has to start with V. Lowercase, uppercase, doesn't matter. V something, right? V1. So V1, the voltage drop is from node 1 to node 0. And the drop is 3 volts. See control M to start a new line. So control M. So actually it's not starting a new line. So control enter is gonna start a new line. If you directly press enter, it's gonna close the window. Don't do that. So start a new line. So we're going to type R1. So it has to start with R, doesn't have to be uppercase, and doesn't have to be R1. You can call it whatever you want, but let's just stick with R1. Space R1 is being shorted to node 1, node 2. So 1 space 2 space, and the resistance is 1.5k. Just directly type 1.5 and no space k. And control enter, start a new line. And now let's do R2. R2 is being shorted in between node 2 and node 0. 2 space 0 space and 1.5 no space k see 
if I directly press enter, no control, then it's going to close the window. And then start a new line. Then your type can, can type V2 there. V2, the voltage drop is from 3 to 2. So type 3 to 2, and the voltage is 1.5 volts. You don't have type V, the unit volts, but if you type a V followed by 1.5, which is fine. So I would just ignore it. Start a new line, then finally R3 here. R3 is from node 3 to node 1, and it's a 3K resistor. And start a new line to type the SPICE command. I just want to do a dot .op, it's called operating point. It's going to show you all the static the voltages and currents. Just dot dot .op. It's called operating point. And done. So that's the SPICE code for this circuit in the schematic and run the simulation, just click the running man, and it's going to show you all the static point for the circuit. So you can see the voltages of the nodes, 1, 2, 3, and also the currents of the resistor running through the resistors. That's how it's simulated. And there's another way to code up the circuit. which is in the text editor. Just right click on new and text editor, just name it, whatever. Here's a little bit different compared to the .op version. I copy and paste the code into here, but it do need the first line to be a title. Otherwise, it's gonna come and out your first uh, spice code. Whatever you wanna name it, doesn't matter. It's just something, right? Something not your circuit, same and save it, close it, come back to here, Multispice, and click this open folder, open, on the menu, open it. So go to the desktop, you can see it's not showing up here, the text editor, because it's not showing that style file. This is the file type, so you want to click all files, so you're going to show up your test, and it's going to load the spice code from the text editor into your schematic. And you have to run simulation, and it's going to run this and show the operating point of the circuit. And you can note that from the text editor, you can see the first line is a different color because it's a text. It's not a spice code. That's why you have to have a first line to be something else, not a circuit. Otherwise, it's going to be commented out. Be careful. You can use either way, but not a schematic way. Not symbols, but spice code to practice, okay? It can be uh, the .op one, you can directly code it up in Spice, or you can have a text editor and load it into Spice later. Doesn't matter. That's how you simulate this circuit. Any questions so far? No? Good, great. And next, superposition. How many of you are have forgotten what is that? What is superposition and how to do it? Pretty much, right? Great. Okay. So the way, um, so you may have taken circuit one with some other uh, with other professors, but. Uh, you know, either way it's going to work, but I will uh, show you how I will do it. Um,
So superposition applies each voltage source or any source can be a current source as well for each time. And you calculate the, whenever you just apply one voltage in a circuit, and you calculate the voltages across each resistor, and then you apply another voltage and find out the voltages across each resistor, and eventually superimpose them together. If they have the same polarity, you add them together. If they have different polarity, do a subtraction. So for example here, V1 only, you want to short this voltage source. K, R3, R2, R1, B1, and it's going to be the circuit where you only apply V1. And now if we want to find out VR1, which is plus minus, you could call it VR1, it's from left to right, or VR2 from top to bottom. VR3 from top to bottom, we just defined, we just defined the polarity of these Vs to each component in the circuit. And this very simple resistor network, it just need to find out all the Vs. Because R1 equals to 1.5K, R2 is also 1.5K, R3 is 3K, B1 is 3 volts, and you can use a theory called the voltage divider, which is way easier. Of course, you can use a mesh current method or node current method. But let's do voltage divider. How that works? For example, this is something else, right? A circuit here, V1. Around here, that's called VL. I'm saying the node here, the voltage of this node is VL. That's a legit statement. Okay, I can say that. And VL is equal to the voltage across VR R2. Is that correct? Why? Yeah, because we all, I, I'm, if I have a multimeter, I'm going to probe this point. So I need a black probe at the ground. So I'm going to show him the, the, voltage of, uh, the voltage of VO. So I'm probing the point. So the point here, I'm, I'm saying the point here, the voltage of this point is VO, which is fine because I'm comparing with zero. And because VO minus zero is still VO. And so that's why VO is the same voltage across R2. So that's a voltage drop from plus to minus across R2. So that's VO. All right. And the voltage divider theory is for this component or this component, doesn't matter. The voltage share equals to the resistance share of that component. So which means the voltage drop on that component equals to the resistance re resistance share of the entire resistance so that means the resistance share of this guy is actually r2 over the entire resistance r1 plus r2 of the circuit that equals to what resistance share equals to the voltage share so that equals to what equals to vr2 the voltage dropped across R2 and the voltage dropped across R1 plus R2, right? The entire voltage, which is actually just a VO over V1. Is that correct? So we just ignore this part and just move things over, move this one here, and we're getting VO equals to R2 over R1 plus R2 times V1, V1. So that means you can directly calculate VO 
using this equation in the future. So that's why we need it here. I know they looks different, but they are literally the same thing. Current is being injected in this direction. So I'm looking at that direction. And these two resistors are in what? So what are these resistors are in? What's the uh, alignment? Parallel. So I can replace this black box of this resistor network with this thing. The black box, I just replace it with the equivalent resistor. Can I do that? So what's the resistance of this equivalent resistor? So I usually just do this, right? So it's 4.5K square over 4.5K. It's actually 1K. So equivalent resistor here is 1K. And it just formed a voltage divider. So what's the voltage here? What's the voltage here as this node? You got three volts, you got 1.5K, you got 1K. What's VO? What's the equation? Yeah, it's 1.2. Yeah. So it's going to be three volts times 1K over 1.5K plus 1K, voltage divider. And it's 1.2 volts. Three over 2.5, yes, 1.2 volts. Is it so is 1.2 volts equal to these voltage points or not? Are they the same voltage? Hmm? So this is a black box. I replaced the black box with this guy. I don't actually care what are inside. It's the same voltage, same same resistance, so same voltage. So it's gonna be the same voltage here, same voltage. So if I got 1.2, it's gonna be 1.2 here as well. So this will be a lot easier than like mesh or nodes, whatever you are going to do, list all the linear equations. You can directly eyeball it. 10 seconds, got it, okay? So you know 1.2 volts, which means you pretty much get everything for this V1 only case. What are they? So you know, if you know this voltage node, you can directly get VR1 is what? What is VR1 from left to right? Mm -mm. So the voltage across this resistor, you have to calculate the drop. This is a 3 volts battery. This is ground. The voltage here will be 3 volts. So the VR1 equals to 3 volts minus 1.2 volts which is 1.8 volts. And VR2 VR3 <clears throat> And if you want to calculate ice very easy
Okay. No, V2 only. So you want to short this thing. I think masks are required. Do you have a mask, Calvin? <laughs> I don't know, forgot it, but. Okay, think about this one. You can definitely rotate it and it's record it's recorded so don't know it's it's recorded so no worries. If you you can find it somewhere. <clears throat> so you can you know if you like you can rotate it and find out you can do a, a voltage divider thing. But we can, I think I prefer just using the mesh method. So I'm gonna label here as I1, here as I2. And this is grounded. So I'm gonna start from here. Uh, you may have been taught to use uh, you know different ways to do the mesh, but it's all the same. Um, just sometimes minus, plus minus same, just clarity same. But if you just follow whatever I, I'm doing or whatever you are comfortable with, which is fine, as long as you can, you can get the correct results. So this I1 is flowing in that direction. So I'm going to list the first uh, linear equation for the first mesh. So it's I1 times R1 plus minus like this, it's flowing in that direction. And then for this mesh for R2, plus I1 minus I2, R2, because the I2 is going up, I1 is going down. Great. <clears throat> this equals to zero, according to KVL. And for the second mesh, also, also starting from here. So I2 is going up. So according to I2's polarity, so it's plus minus. So I'm doing I2 minus I1 times R2. And you are seeing a minus sign here, so minus 1.5. Plus I2 times I R3 equals to zero. That's the second linear equation for the second mesh. So one quick question. Is I1 the physical current flow through R1? So I1 is a mesh for this one, for this mesh, mesh current for this mesh. And I2 is the mesh current for the second mesh. So my question is, I know the mesh currents are kind of virtual. You know, you can assume it, but is I1 the physical current flow through R1? Yes, because there's nothing to share that current on the other mesh. Is I1 the physical current flow through R2? 
No. So what's the physical current flow through R2? I1 minus I2. Okay. And you got the, the linear equations, and now you want to just solve for the numbers here. Let's combine. That's I1, R1 plus R2. Uh, you're getting 3K minus I2 times 1.5K equals to zero. For the second one, um, R3 is 3K, R2 is 1.5K, so it's I2 times 4.5K minus I1 times 1.5K equals to 1.5 volts. So you can cancel this two by times two for this equation. So I'm getting 9K. And add them together. You're getting 7.5K times I2 equals to three volts. So I2 equals to three volts over 7.5K which is 0.4 milliamps. The guy I2. If you know I2, you know VR3. So what is VR3? I'm two volts. And you can cal calculate for I1 easily, just plug into here, for example. And it's so 0.4 milliamps times this guy is going to be 0.6 volts. And over 3K, so I1 is 0.2 milliamps. And now you know VR, VR1 because you know I1. So it's 1.5K times 0.2 milliamp. It's 0.3 volts. So what is VR3 of VR2? So I1 minus I2, what is I1? 0.2 milliamp. I2 is 0.4 milliamp. So get a negative number here, times 1.5K. So the voltage of VR2 is actually negative 0.3 volts. Why? Because we, we, defined, we defined the voltage of VR2 is top to bottom plus minus. But now we're getting a negative, which means it's actually bottom to top plus minus, right? Um, so you got these all these VR1, VR2, VR3s, and now you just need to superimpose them together. So let's write it, uh, do it one by one. So VR1. So what's the first of VR1? Do you remember that? 1.8 volts. And what's the second VR1? 0.3 volts. You want to do additional subtraction. Addition, right? Because we we used the same polarity in two, in both cases, so it will be 1.8 volts plus 0.3 volts, which is 2.1 volts. And VR2, we have 1.2 volts and minus 0.3 volts with 0 0.8 volts, and VR3 is 1.2 volts plus 1.2 volts, which is 2.4 volts. So that's the final result. You want to calculate the current through, flow through at each resistor, you just do a division, right? So IR1 equals to VR1 over R1 is calculated. And R2, VR2 over R2, and IR3 
goes to VR3 over R3. That's how that works. And then simulate it and to verify if this is correct. So, let's run the simulation really quick. LT spice load, no, load, load the code. Text editor and run. So, what we calculated are the voltages across the resistors, but the, re the voltages here are the node voltages. Okay, so VR1, we calculated VR1 as 2.1 volts, so which means the voltage across this resistor will be 2.1, so the voltage here will be 0 0.9. So volt node 2 should be 0 0.9, which is correct. And Second one. So for this node, we calculated VR3 is 2.4, and it's just the same voltage as the voltage across our uh, VR3, and also the same voltage as the voltage node here, because it's compared to zero. See, I'm grounded. It's, this node is grounded, so it's zero volts. So whatever the voltage here is the same as the voltage across uh, R3. So VR3 equals to the voltage here. And the node of this node, uh, so the, the name of this node is called 3 in this circuit. So node 3 is 2.4 volts, and we calculate it as 2.4 volts as well, so it's verified. And for the currents flowing through everything, you can calculate it using Ohm's law and compare. Any questions? It's recorded, so you can still watch it. Okay. It can be challenging at the very beginning if I've forgotten everything. Um, so don't hesitate to ask questions and also uh, start doing the calculation by yourself. So you eventually understand it. Second, seven is equivalent. There is always a circuit called RC circuit if you are dealing with digital delay. So look at this schematic. And let's don't think about the resistor network first. So if I just draw a circuit like this, RC, V in, V out. Just forget about the schematic on the website. Okay, just look at this one. Did you see this one in circuit one? Did you learn this in circuit one? <clears throat> so I'm gonna let you know, your V in is a sharp pulse. V out, it's gonna look like this. It's called time delay. And got the 50% of voltage range, you have five volts, you're getting 2.5 volts here. It's a matter it. Find out the 2.5 volts points and find out the corresponding X axis values, which are time. It's running on time domain, right? It's a pulse of time. And the time difference is called time delay. And the value is independent to the voltage. It's exactly 0.7 RC. We're not going to derive it, but just remember it, 0.7 RC. 
So if you have, if you know this is how much, if you know this is how much, you can definitely know the time delay instantly. You know, you disregard the voltage value. No V, only R and C and a constant. So. My question for you guys is, for this type of circuit, after a while, for example, after this, it's time, right? So after this time point, you know, after one hour or so, do you still have current flowing through the circuit? And why? So you want to understand what's going on here. Only learning circuit one is not enough. Intuitively, what's going on? Imagine there's a switch. Someone calls a switch at some point. Instead of doing the calculations with all these integration, differentiation, forget about it, right? Just think about it. What's happening? What's going on? It's literally just a a voltage source, a DC voltage, with a resistor, it's a linear component, and a nonlinear component. So this guy, capacitor, is nothing but a, you know, component with two metal plates, and with a dielectric material in the middle, which which is an insulator, right? They have two metal plates. I mean, if you just imagine, the things in the middle is not conducting anyway, right? You just stretch it. They are just two metal wires, two metal pieces, and it's a broken circuit. The only difference is this metal plate thing can store charges, like a bucket. And the voltage source is like a water pump. They are pumping water into it. Okay? Same concept. Okay? Someone calls a switch. It starts charging starts charging the cap capacitor cap okay so you are going to have current flow through this broken circuit is that amazing it's a broken circuit but you've got current flow very short period of time very short i see anyway yeah. right but after a while after it's being charged up to the full range. There's no current anymore. Established, fully charged, static. Because current means flow. You got flow, charge flow, you got current. No charge flow, no current. Established, fully charged, no current. Why no current? If this cap is fully charged, it performs like a battery. And what's the voltage across it? Same voltage as this guy, fully charged. Same voltage, same, same, same pressure. No voltage drop across a resistor, no current flow. Right? But it takes time to charge it up. It can happen quickly, it can, can be solid. Depends on the resistance and capacitance value combination, which is 0% RC. This can take longer time if you have a huge resistor. Why? If you have a huge resistor, according to Ohm's law, large resistor will give you a slower current or lower current. So you're actually charging up the bucket slower. Um, if you have a huge bucket, it takes longer time to charge it up. That's why 0.7 RC. Larger resistor, larger capacitance will give you a larger delay. So this takes longer time to charge up to the full voltage range. And <clears throat> so what's actually happening here is, if you imagine there are some positive charges, I mean, literally it's just like trans flow, but let's imagine there are some positive charges are flowing, all right? It's not, but just imagine, okay? It's actually electrons flowing back. But let's just imagine there are positive charges flowing. 
right? So if we close the switch, the positive charges are going to flow into here. Why? They're metal. You close the switch, it's going to conduct metal. So positive charges are going to flow, even though it's going to stop, but it's going to flow in the very beginning and accumulate it here. And it's going to form an electric field. And that positive charge is going to kick the positive charge is on the other plate, away from that plate, and being pushed away and being neutralized by the castle. It's going to leave what? Here. Negative charges for electrons. All right? So it's going to form a voltage difference between the two plates. And what's the voltage? Eventually. V in. Yeah? You're asking, hey, you got a resistor here. Why this voltage is the same voltage here? Why? I mean, yes, we have a resistor. Why do you think we have a voltage drop across the resistor? There's no drop eventually. Why? Yeah, but why? Why is the resistor is not dropping any voltage? Vr equals to what? This one will be there all forever. What about this one? Remember, no current anymore, no flow anymore. So no drop. So it's going to conduct the voltage potential to the two plates. So v, Vc equals to Ve eventually. Takes time. So if you have a pretty fast pulse, it's not stabilized at high voltage for that long, it's gonna come back to zero very quickly and then oscillate like this as your input. So what's gonna happen for the output? Yeah. It's gonna oscillate because it's not stable. See, it's the same RC, it's gonna be the same behavior. It's just change the input. So the voltage is gonna to rise to here and then start discharging, right? Because it's, your input becomes zero. It's not charging up anymore. It's gonna discharge, so it's gonna go down. And then going up, going down, going up, going down like this, it's gonna oscillate. Can never reach the full voltage range. So whenever you're designing your input, for your circuit, you want to know what is the delay first. The delay takes like 5.6 microseconds. You want your pulse width, width here to be at least a lot times wider than the time delay here at least, right? So it's not oscillating. You give, you give the circuit enough time, enough amount of time to charge up to here. So you don't want to oscillate your input like this fast. You probably want to oscillate it like this as your pulse. So if you see this oscillation, it's oscillating, you want to modify your input frequency. <clears throat> so if we come back to seven is equivalent, We want to convert everything here eventually to RC circuit like this, so we can calculate the time delay. Since we only need R and one C, one R one C, but this is literally not one R. You you got one C as a load, but you don't have one R. So the way to do that is convert this thing to its seven is equivalent. <clears throat> How to do it? You need a VTH and RTH. So what is RTH? Remove the load and look backwards. Find out the equivalent resistance. What is the load? 
CL is a loading capacitor. Loading capacitor. Let's so remove it. And look backwards, also you want to show the voltage source. Two K. Two K. Two K. Six K. Look backwards is important. You know, look backwards to find out the equivalent resistance. If you look in the other direction, it's a totally different resistor network. Keep in mind. So if you look in that direction backwards from the output, since you have removed the cap, right? You remove it and look backwards. And imagine that there's a current flowing and one branch, another branch, and split, split. So you want to start from where? To find out the equivalent resistance. Start from where? Hmm? No, capacitor has been removed. So that's the first step. You want to do your 70 equivalent, right? You want to remove the load first. The capacitor is the load. It, the load can be a resistor. It doesn't matter, right? It's just the load. Let's just disconnect the load. Here, first the parallel, or probably here, because that's the, that's the end. So this entire thing here, the two resistors are in parallel and series. Hmm? Parallel or series? Parallel. So what's the resistance of this black box? 1K. 2K in parallel is 2K is 1K. And this 1K thing, Still looking backwards, right? So now I converted this one into the 1K resistor. And I have this 2K, 2K here. So now, what's next? You have 2K, 1K in series. So they are actually just a 3K resistor. And now I have 3K and 6K in parallel. So it's nothing but an RTH is 2K resistor in parallel, 2K. So RTH is 2K for this circuit. It's just 2K and 4 nanofarads and V. So what's the time delay? Eight times zero point seven five point six K times nano micro So the time delay is five point six microseconds. And now let's simulate and see if that works. So open a text editor. to type everything. Starting from V in, if we label these nodes as the stuff on zero, one, two, three, so only three nodes. V in is from one to zero for the drop. And now it's not a DC voltage, it's a pulse. So you want to type pulse and find out arguments somewhere later. I'm going to show you later, no worries. And now R4 is from one to two, and it's a 2K resistor. And R6 is from Two to zero is a two K resistor. R five is from two to three, and it's a two K resistor as well. 
and R7 is from 3 to 0, and it's a 6K resistor. And CL is from 3 to 0, and it's a 4 nano cap. And I'll do a transient analysis. And since we have, let's define the pulse first. So if you look at the website, I already told you the, I already lib, uh, indicated that the arguments in the pulse function are uh, these things. There's a low voltage, high voltage, delay, rising time, period. So <clears throat> let's say, let's see. So the voltage starts with zero and jump. So the pulse jumps to five volts. That's the second one, high voltage, and then delay. I just got a zero delay. We don't need any delay. And rising time is the edge. The rising edge. We want to make the edge sharp. So it's one picosecond. And falling one picosecond as well. On time, that's the important part. Remember? We have calculated the time delay to be 5.6 microseconds. And your own time is going to be here. I will just use 5.6 microseconds. What about that? What's the problem? So what's 5.6 being calculated here? It's 50-50%, right? 50% here. That's a time delay. So your input pulse width should be how much larger or smaller than 5.6 microseconds? Should be smaller than, uh, lower, uh, shorter than 5.6 or longer than 5.6? Longer, right? How long? You know, if you look at this, I got 50%. You know, here's the time delay. This is, a, this is already 5.6. So my pulse, you know, if you look at this and this, I would say, you know, at least at like, 10 times I will be comfortable with, right? So safe, let's go 10 times. So what's the V on? So now I'm doing on time, this argument. I just do 56 microseconds. You only need to type a U there and cure it. So you know it's a it's a square wave. So on time should be half of the period. So if I define on time to be 56 microseconds, so what's the period should be? So 56 micro for, for here. So what's the period should be? 112. All right, that's pretty much everything. And I will close it. I'm going to go to our device to load it in. Open. Show all the files. Double click and run it. Oh, sorry. How long is the simulation? So one period is 112 microseconds. I mean, if you want to look at the final simulation waveform, it's probably you want to see at least the two waveforms, two periods. So I just do 300 microseconds and run. So it's not showing anything. What's the problem? because I didn't add it. Right click, add the traces. So what are the traces you want to add? So what we are doing for this problem? We are going to verify the time delay. So you want to look at what? V in and V out, so you can get the delay. So what is V in? That's V1. What is VL? V3. What's happening? Whew. 
It's not what we expect. Here is the full range of the voltage. It's not charging up to the full range. What's the problem? Is there a problem? I mean, you think, hey, you didn't give enough time to make it to fully charge to the full range. Is that the case? Why? It's already flat. They get 10,000 years, still flat. It's already discharged to the ground. So it looks different. So it's discharged to the ground already, but not fully charged to the voltage range. Why? What is this? There are so many resistors. It's dividing the voltage. It's a voltage divider. How can I expect this voltage can be fully charged to the full and full range? It's losing voltage. It's losing some potential values. Right? It's a voltage divider, right? It's not a very perfect voltage divider, but it's dividing. It's only taking part of the entire voltage because it's a, the voltage ratio equals the resistance ratio. It's only, only a share of it. Right? So I can expect it. The reason is, uh, the thing is, when, when we were talking about the time delay, I'm expecting this one to be fully charged to the full range. But this the circuit looks like this, it's not this. This one is not dividing the voltage. Remember? Why it's not dividing the voltage? Because this is a cap, it's not a resistor. So there's no voltage drop. Why? After a while, remember, they have the same potential. No current, no voltage drop. So this is different from this one. So in that case, how can I find out, how can I modify the spice code to have it fully charged to whatever it should be, and then use a cursor to measure the time delay so I can verify my calculation. So we didn't finish the calculation for the 70s equivalent circuit, did we? We only got a RTH, but we didn't calculate for VTH. So if you got VTH, it's gonna be a standard RC circuit. So we, in our SPICE code, I used five volts. That's the original VIN. And it's being divided. I need a VTH to be here. So calculate for VTH and replace it. Replace the 5 with your VTH. And you're going to see a perfect RC delay curve. And the way to mirror it, pay attention to here, double click. You can bring up the little window, the little monitor. And, you know, because I don't know what's... Uh, 50% is over here. So I'm going to find out the VTH so I know what's the 50% of VTH. And I'm going to probe. I'm going to look at here until it's 50% of VTH and I'm going to stop. And so for the other cursor, I'll just move it to the input. The input is pretty sharp, rising edge. So it doesn't matter where you point to as long as it's, see this cursor? As long as you overlap the vertical dashed line with the input, it's fine. And now you are looking at the <clears throat> difference of the horizontal values. It's here. See, diff, cursor 2 minus cursor 1. And you can find out the difference is somewhere around like 5.4 microseconds. And we calculate it as 5.6 microseconds. So it's pretty accurate. And if you can find out the VTH, you can actually make it even more accurate because you can directly point to point the cursor to 50%, not this value. I don't know what is that value because I don't know VTH. If you calculate the VTH, you just uh, find out 50% of VTH to be here, shows up here, doesn't have to be that very accurate. And then you stop. And then you look at this value, see if it's 5.6. 
you want to make a snapshot of that verification and post it on the report to show that here's a calculation on the right hand paper you can take a picture of it and save it as a picture on the website if you want to type it somewhere it's fine but i think it's easier way probably just write on the paper and take a picture of it for the calculation and then compare with the simulation make a snapshot use the snipping tools this one to make a snip, snip shot and snapshot and save it as a figure and post it on the uh, submit everything to the website the server so you can have a HTML page for the report okay any questions so this is recorded